Hi everyone. Today our session about the prevention of respiratory hazard through administrative controls. The content of this session will be about the development of the respiratory protection program and assigning responsibilities, discussing the respiratory protection program activities in the infection prevention and control regular committee, development of the respiratory protection program policy and procedures, develop the RPP monitoring and evaluation, providing education and training in the healthcare facilities to all required categories. First of all, development of the RPP and assigning responsibility. So we have to develop and construct an effective respiratory protection program with an emphasis on preventing the transmission of respiratory infectious disease, which is essential and critical at this point. The second thing that we have to discuss the respiratory protection program activities in the regular infection prevention and control committee. As we all know that each healthcare facility should have a multidisciplinary regular infection prevention and control committee. It's preferred that to explore the main respiratory protection program activities as a main aspect and, to and topic in the same committee agenda to ensure that the continuity and the proactivity is taking place. We have a specific aspect that could be discussed in the Infection Prevention and Control Regular Committee. We can review the respiratory protection program activities and ensure its effectiveness. Being aware that the respiratory protection program activities is multi-faced and the responsibility of the multidisciplinary team and includes planning, monitoring, and evaluating the RPP at the facility, coordinating and supervising the RPP activities and communicating with all departments to ensure the continuity and the proactivity of the program taking place, ensuring that the committee analyzes and identifies solution to any issues with the potential to embed the effective implementation of the RPP activities and measures, constructing scientific preventive approaches to ensure that healthcare workers and patients and visitors are in a safe environment, free from any exposure to the respiratory pathogen. The third aspect or substandard is development of policy and procedure. The facility must establish a comprehensive and approved policy and procedure that govern all the aspects of the respiratory protection program. The RPP policy and procedure should be developed according to the MOH guidelines and regulations. Hospital staff must have the access and know how to reach that policy all the time. Also, we have to put in our mind that each healthcare facility should have a system in place for a vaccination of their staff at considerable risk for acquiring or transmitting respiratory disease, including COVID-19, influenza, measles, mumps, rubella, pertosis, and varicella. Another strategy that we have to follow all the time for an effective implementation of the respiratory protection program, respiratory protection program record keeping. The RPP requires several types of records to be maintained. Written respiratory protection program policy and procedures, fit testing record for the basic infection control skills license, committee minutes of meeting documents, respiratory protection equipment supplies and their bar level, and airborne infection isolation room maintenance forms. All these documents must be available and accessible to all healthcare workers all the time. Another standard or substandard based on the main standard, the development of the RPP monitoring and evaluation. A program monitoring and evaluation are required and the following approaches should be adopted. Standard and critical regular, regular program monitoring and evaluation are required by the RPP for successful implementation of the same program. Each healthcare facility should monitor and evaluate the activities that are taking place and the hospital department and infection control department must collaboratively working together to monitor and evaluate the effectiveness of the program and to ensure the main compliance with the MOH guidelines and regulation are taking place. The performance measurement tools that contribute to the unique characteristic of the healthcare facility should be used for all program activities, such as progress pertaining to respiratory fit testing coverage, which is about pixel coverage rate, 
and all documents must be available and accessible for all processes. Another substandard that we have to follow is providing education and training in the healthcare facility, which is really critical. Respiratory protection program training is a critical component of an effective respiratory protection program implementation, but it's required significant time and resources. Tailored education and training methods are required to improve the knowledge and the skills and the competency of healthcare workers, patients, and their families of the respiratory protection against respiratory infectious agents. Consequently, training is a critical resource in addressing practice, compliance, and knowledge of respiratory protection. Thank you so much for attending this session. And if you have any inquiries, please don't hesitate to contact us at any time. Thank you so much.